What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're gonna go over adding custom fields to your user profile. So this has been highly asked for in the comments of multiple videos. So really the general concept here is that you can add something other than what Firebase authentication lets you add on a user's profile. So for the example of this video, we're gonna be adding the home country and we're also going to be distinguishing if a user is an admin or not an admin. So you can see right now this user is an admin. If I were to change it in Firestore that this user is not an admin, so if I marked this as false and went back to the profile page, you'll see that is admin thing is gone, so this is an admin specific feature. Uh, the other thing is we're going to let the user edit this home country and upload it and edit it. So if we change this to, for instance, Italy and hit save, you'll see that's saved right there as well as in Firebase. All right, let's get started. Um, so let's get started with actually creating a new, creating that new model. So in our models folder here, open that up and create a new folder, or not a new folder, a new file. And this we're gonna call user. So this is gonna be kind of similar to how our trip is created. Uh, we're gonna create a new class. It's gonna be much simpler, but create a new class called user, and then we're just gonna define those parameters. So for me, again, it's just gonna be a string, and that's gonna be the home country. And then we'll have a bool value, which is just gonna be either true or false, whether or not they're an admin. Uh, then we will create uh, the constructor for this. So this is how we will create a new, anytime we wanna create a, an instance of this class, we'll use this constructor. This constructor, And the only thing we're gonna require is their home country. And then that would be it. We're not gonna, the admin stuff, we're not actually gonna let you edit from the app. So my my thinking is you're probably only gonna have like one or one to you know two admins or however many you have. I don't think it's gonna be that many. So you're going to actually edit a user's uh, you know data in in Firestore itself and just mark them as an admin. Everyone else will default to not being an admin. Um, right now, since we're in here, we can actually create the the function that will allow us to upload to Firebase easily. Basically, converting our user object to a Firebase JSON object. Uh, which is really just a JSON object that we can give to Firebase. We do this, if you look down here in our trip uh, our trip class, we do this, which is basically just mapping the, you know, the, op the, the title of our actual trip will be formatted for JSON. So I actually just go ahead and copy this and we'll simplify it to what we need. Um, we only have the two parameters, so home country, we'll call it that in Firebase as well. This is what it will look like in Firebase. So if you could change, you know, what you call it in Firebase if you wanted to, but that just gets a bit confusing, I think. Um, but anyway, that looks good. Um, that's gonna be it really for our model here, I think. So we can save that for now. Uh, the next thing to do is gonna be go to our profile view, which is where we were on, oh, which is where we were over on this page. And before we forget, let's just go ahead and import that, uh, that new model, which is the user's model. So I guess the first thing we could do is create a new button here because I think the way we're gonna edit this user is by having a pop-up that lets them just change their, their country of origin. Let's set that first and then we'll actually display the country here and then allow them to edit it as many times as they want and it'll change and sync back with Firebase. So firstly, let's add that button right below the sign out. Uh, you can see we have the show sign out button here, which is actually a widget itself that either will or will not show that button. But right below that, we can just put a raised button and uh, the text of it is just gonna be is just gonna be edit user, and that should be text. Uh, and then the on pressed, which we're going to create, is going to just be, we're gonna create a new function for the on pressed. So yeah, we'll call this the user edit bottom sheet. Um, because we're building this within the, 
because we're using a bottom shoe, we are gonna need to pass the context through. So we just do that here. Uh, now we can copy this and actually create this function, which will be a void function, because it's really just going to build the bottom sheet. So use that. Um, here we can just say that this is a build context, and that will look good there. Um, now we have built this bottom sheet before we did it in our detail trip view. Uh, down at the bottom we have a trip edit modal bottom sheet so that's we're going to build a similar thing to this uh some of the stuff we can copy but all right so i kind of just wrote this all out because i think it's redundant to show it again but basically if you hit edit now this is what it will look like and real quickly i could go over that um the show modal bottom sheet is going to be built with a 60 percent height which is why you see it's not going up all the way um if you did want to go up all the way just remove this line um the next thing is we have three rows right now. The first row is this title with the X here, which is this row you're seeing here. We have the title, then we have a spacer, and then we have this icon, which is just going to pop the the view context. So if we click the X here, the it pops off that modal sheet or the bottom sheet that we were seeing. Um, that's pretty simple. So that's that first row. The second row is actually just an empty text field right now. Uh, we we wrote home country as the uh, the helper text there. We will need to wire this up to actually work, so that's not quite set up. But other than the view of it, uh, and then the last row is just the button, which right now the on pressed has almost nothing in it, other than it'll pop as well. So if you hit save here, it's going to do the same thing as that X out button does. So that is our view for it. Now let's get it set up where we can actually create that new user. So if you scroll up to the very top of this, you'll notice that we've been using a stateless widget so far for our profile page. That needs to change to actually a stateful widget because we are going to hold the state of what this value is here and save it to the user. But again, the way that I've been doing all of this Firebase stuff throughout the app is we'll save the data to Firebase, but we'll also have a stateful variable that will update when we change this value. So this is made really simple by just clicking the uh, convert to stateful widget button. And now everything is, uh, I mean, that's it. That's all you need to do. Now we have a stateful widget. So the few things we're going to change here are, firstly, let's create a new variable and create an instance of that user that we created over here. So the user, again, is not going to have a home country. And we're not going to have a user sign up and enter that information. We want them to just sign up as quickly as possible. Uh, if you wanted to, though, you could basically add this whole, uh, like everything we're doing right here, you could add to the onboarding process and then ask them for that information there. I am not going to do that though. Before this override in the actual profile view state, we can create a new uh, user variable of type user. And we already did import that package. And then we're just going to, this is just going to equal a new user uh, with a, we need to pass it that, again, this constructor, we need to pass it the home country. So we're just going to pass it a blank string for now. and this will help us be able to display that the country is blank, even though the, I mean, it obviously is blank, but, but then we can update this user with the new country when they, when they change it. So the next thing we need to do is actually, let's get this able to, to save data now to that user object we just created. So we want the home country that's entered here to be saved back to that user object. If you go down into, again, our user editor, or user edit, bottom sheet function, you'll see we do have that text field here. And uh, above the decorator, we're going to actually need a controller for this. So again, if you've been following along the videos, this is typically how we've done uh, any type of text field. We add a, a user, I mean, we'll just need to name the controller. So it'll be a uh, text field controller. Let's just call it the user, uh, I guess what is, this will be the user country code, so, or the user country controller. 
All right, so now we need to define that. So up at the top below this user, we can do a text editing controller and it'll be called the user country controller. And again, this is just going to be a new uh, text editing controller. We don't actually need the new. I think you can just define it as the text editing controller. Same with the user here. The new is like older Flutter. You don't really need it anymore. Um, anyway, moving forward then. Now we have this text editing controller, so we can use it to save whatever value is here when that button is clicked. So if we scroll down again in our in our on pressed button here, uh, a few th we're gonna add. We're actually gonna need to add a few things, but the first thing we can add is just that we're going to set the user uh, home country is going to equal the text editing, con okay, not the actual text editing controller, the variable that we just created, which is the user country controller. And we're gonna want the text value of that. So now our user, our user's home country will be set to whatever value is in this controller. And in a bit, we're actually gonna set the default of this to be what is what is in the user's home country. But right now that would be non-existent, so it doesn't make sense to necessarily do that yet. All right, so right now we're only saving the value that's in this text field to our user object that we have in this view, but we're not saving it to Firebase yet. So let's actually go ahead and save this to Firebase. Let me show you where in Firebase we're gonna store this. So this is currently the way our data is set up in Firebase. We have just one one collection called user data, and then each one of these is um, a document, but the document name is the user's ID. So currently, the the app that I'm in this the app in the simulator is using this user right here, which has these four trips. So you can see we already have this user. Uh, we already have this user document. So all these are going to be specific to a user. So anywhere deeper in here is where we would want to put the user's um, you know, profile information. So you could add a new collection and call it something different, but there's really no need to create a collection because the user's profile data is only going to be one document. So we don't need, the, like the reason we have the trips collection here is because a user is going to have multiple trips. So it makes sense to, to add the trips as a collection. But this profile data is really just uh, you know a few fields that each each user is going to have, so we can write that directly to this document. So you can see this document this document has collections, but it can also have fields. So you can add the fields in here if you want, but I'm just we're just going to do it from the app, and it will populate the fields right here. But you can see that this document this document actually does not exist. It's just a reference document to this collection. So we're going to make this document essentially exist with that profile information. So to do that, we need to get that we need to get that user's UID, which is what which we've done throughout the app multiple times using our provider and we've actually even done it in this file so we don't even need to import provider. We can just use it. So uh, let's get that UID here, which we'll get it as a final variable and the UID is going to equal the provider um we're gonna need that build context as always and then we can call that auth method on our provider and then auth we do have a function that is get current uid if you're not set up with all this uh previous videos will show you how to get all of that set up um so this this function right here will essentially get us this string right here and it will be that string because this user that's logged in is that account the, that is their UID. Um, so if that makes sense, uh, the next thing we're going to do is now that we have the UID, we're going to actually make that call to Firebase. So far in the app, we've been making our calls to Firebase using a using a Firebase instance, and we've just been creating a new database instance uh, in each file that we needed it. So I'm gonna actually show you how to move that to the provider as well. So similar to how we're using the provider for our auth, we can use the provider for our database instance. And that'll make our app just a little bit cleaner, I think. So this is pretty quick and simple to do. Uh, the first thing, 
Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is open up our provider file, which is actually under widgets. So go to our provider widget here. And this is, I guess, essentially optional. You don't need to do it. You can keep creating a new instance of the, of the database in each file that you need it. So you can see our provider right now has that auth service, um, that auth service auth variable. So we're gonna add very similarly another variable, which we'll call DB, which will be our database. Uh, and then you'll see we also will add that here. So when a new uh, instance of a provider is created, it's going to be created with um, that DB. Uh, it's gonna be created with that new DB variable. So uh, luckily we only actually create one instance of the provider in our app. So that's done on the main page. So you can see on the main page, we create, this is where we create our provider, which is the overall highest level of our app. And you can see this is where we define that auth again, which is just an auth service instance. So now we can define that DB here. And the, the DB here, which is the database, is just going to be an instance of Firestore. So we're just going to use Firestore and then call instance on it. And that's it. So now we'll be able to access uh, this DB Firebase instance from anywhere in our app at all. So, so we can close out a main and go back over here. And I'm not going to go through and update the the other instances that I'm creating, but you sh I, not in the video, but I will go and update all the instances of Firebase to use the provider now because that's the point of it. Um, but yeah, anyway, in this profile view now, we can we can await, and now we're gonna actually make the call to to save this data to, to this document. So that's gonna to have to be done with an await because this will be asynchronous. So await, and now we're gonna get that provider um, instance of the database. So it's basically done the same way that we get the auth, except now we're gonna call DB. And now that we have the instance of the database, we can just call the, um, we need to basically call where we want to update to. So we want to update user data and then the UID. So user data is a collection. So we're going to need to call collection or we're going to need to, we're going to need to use collection here and then give it the name of that collection, which is user data. And then after the collection, we want to find that document for this UID. So, so call document, and then we can do the UID. As I'm looking at this right now, we are going to need to await this as well, because this is also a this is also a call to to Firebase. So, after we get the UID here, now we can actually set the data. So we want to use set data because it will allow us to update this and it will allow us to not only just create a new a new piece of data but it will also allow us to update this later meaning like if the user sets their country they can also just change it and and update it with this set data um, so set data is there and now we need to pass the data as a json string so again we already have this user object which we want to update so this is essentially what we're going to pass is this right here so we can use that that to json function that we created so really we're just going to use we're going to call that user variable and then call to json oh to json um, and that is actually it so we're going to want a semicolon at the end there i'll format this so it stacks them but if you save this now and you go back to your profile and hit edit user and now we type uh, USA and hit save. All right, so that should have saved that value from that text field into our, our, our data object. So if we go into um, Firestore here, you can see the home country is now USA and admin is null, which is actually expected because we never passed admin into that user object. The, the user object was always, uh, when we created an instance of it, we only added country to it. And then admin, when we created our JSON for, 
you know, for the uh, to upload a Firebase admin is null because we didn't ever define it. So that's good, but that's what we want. Um, so that looks good. Now we need to get that displaying here, the user country, and then also allow them to edit it. So you can see it does still say USA here, which is good, but that's only because the state of this hasn't changed. So if we go back to the home page and then come back to the profile, you'll see now it's gone. So, so these are kind of tied together. We're gonna get the value now from Firebase and then default that value in that text field and then also allow the user to change that. All right, so to do this, we are going to need a future builder. So you'll see we are using a future builder right here to actually build out these three uh, values here. And really what this future builder is doing is it's waiting to get the current user's data and then it's going to, once it gets the data, it's going to call this display user information function. So this display user information function is actually just a widget which returns a column with those three fields as well as these two buttons. So we can actually just right within here have another future builder that builds out the the next uh, row of this, which the row of this will be just the user's uh, country. The future builder here is gonna be relatively small, so I'm just gonna build it within this, but you could make it its own function and then call that function in here. Let's go ahead and just begin. So call future builder here. And then before we forget, put that comma ending. Now the future builder is going to actually just get that profile data. So it's just gonna get this data here. So that itself will make into another function. So let's see, that we're going to call right here. So we're gonna call that with get uh, profile data. And this is a function that we have not created yet. Um, so once that function is called, uh, I'll just set this up real quick. So we need to actually get, we need to create this function, which is going to call Firebase for that profile data. So let's just do that quickly down here, and then we'll go back up and finish the future builder. So this is just going to, it's not gonna return, it's, so this is where this, there's a few ways you could do this. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm not going to actually have this return anything. I'm just going to have it set this user objects data for the country code. So right now the country code is always gonna be set to an empty string regardless of what the user is like regardless if the user has a country code set or not. So once this function is called, instead of having it return anything, I'm just going to have it set that user's country code on that user object. So if that doesn't make sense, I think once you see it, it will. So again, we're going to need to get that user ID, which we're doing right down here. Uh, we're going to need this because uh, we need to access this exact document with that UID. So very similarly, uh, this will actually need to be an asynchronous function. So add that. Um, there we go, we'll be able to get the UID with that. And then this is going to be kind of similar to how we're writing the data here with all of this, with all this right here with the provider and getting the instance of the database, getting that collection, getting the document for the user's ID. And then instead of calling set data, we can just call get. Um, and the reason we can use get here is because we know we're getting a specific document. So we're only trying to get one document here. So that's why we can use get. If there were multiple documents, which we've done in other videos, you have to do um, get documents and then, and then basically loop through all the documents. But anyway, that's get and then uh, actually, after this, we can call then. So at this point, we would have the user's data, right? So you could just return the user's data here and then do whatever you want with it later. But I'm just going to do what we want with it right within this function. So call then and then use uh, results here. This is just any variable name for the results that we're getting. So this is basically the data that's returned from this uh, document here. 
using get. Uh, let's just do result since it's just one result. So it'll be that result. And now we have access to the data through this results variable and we can do whatever we want with it. So again, as I was saying, we're going to update that user, that user object. We're gonna update their home country. And we're gonna set it equal to the result. The result is a JSON object and if you print it out, you can see what's actually in it, but we're just gonna, we're gonna call the data cause that's what we want. We want the results data and then it's going to have a uh, home country is actually going to be in there. And the reason the home country will be in there is because that's exactly what we named it right here in Firestore. So if you did not use the same name here, you're gonna to wanna to use, if you just call this country, for example, you're going to put country in this uh, string right there. Uh, that's it for that. Let's also update similar to the country. Let's pull in the admin as well. So if the admin was set, then we will get that value as well, which we'll use in a bit. So that's actually gonna be it for this. So now when we call get profile, which again is gonna be done in the future builder, when we call get profile, the results of that will be passed into the snapshot, which the results are basically nothing. Like we don't need, we're not returning results here. We don't really need them because we already saved these values down here. So really all we need to do is once this is called, there it is, the, the future builder. Once this is called, we can, we can check that the uh, connection state is done. So that will just mean when, when it's completed, which will look like this line. Uh, and then once that's completed, we can actually update. This would be the similar to like setting the state. We can update the variable of our country code controller text to be the actual users uh, this is actually, we're gonna want the text value of that. So we're gonna update the text value of that form field to be the user's uh, home country. Which again is what we just saved. So we just saved the user object's home country to be that value from Firestore. And now we're saving that value to be this uh, text fields value as well. Pretty much once this builder is, regardless of what happens here, we're going to build, uh, we're gonna return that home country here as, as a new line. So if you just copy this whole thing here, the padding part, uh, we can just return that here. And we'll change this to be uh, country or home country. And then instead of this, we're going to actually just give it the user home country and this will need to be a semicolon now instead of a comma so if you save this and click on it you'll see all right we actually have a bit of an error okay the reason we actually have this error is because we have user defined twice um, earlier in this function and this was done in another video we have this display user information and we defined user as being the snapshot data and this user is not a user object, but it's actually just the snapshot data from Firebase auth. So let's call this instead uh, auth data and change that for these values that were already existing here, uh, which there should be, yeah, display name and email. That might be the only ones. Uh, so now if we save this, Okay, and the third one is the created date, so there as well. And if the user is anonymous, uh, that one as well. So now that user variable is actually our, um, is gonna be our user object. And I did change as well this home country to be the user country controller dot text instead, uh, which since they're set to the same thing here, it doesn't actually matter. Um, but now if you go to the profile, you'll see our, our home country is right there above the created date. Um, if you go out and come back in, you'll see it does take a second to load and that's, that's what we would want. So it's loading it from Firebase, but it doesn't ruin the app. So now if you edit this, you'll see it does say USA here, which is what it was. Um, but if you go back and hit a different and change it to something else and hit save, 
You'll see it doesn't actually update here, but if you go into Firebase, it does update there. So quick, that's actually a pretty quick fix and kind of seems unintuitive, but if you go down here in our on pressed, we can set the state of this user current or this user country controller text to equal the home controller, um, which I don't know, seems a bit confusing because we're basically setting the home controller equal to that anyway but the state gets reset um, unless we call set state on it. So if you save that, go to the profile, you'll see now it says Italy because it was pulled uh, from Firebase. If we edit the user and we go back to USA and hit save, now that goes to USA and we're back to USA here. All right, the last quick thing I wanna show you is if the user is an admin, which we can mark them as an admin in Firestore, we want to be able to display a custom widget. This example I'll just show you right here. I'll just put another custom, or let's put another line of text that says you're an admin, but really this concept can be used to manipulate the app in any way you want. So maybe an admin has something different in the nav bar or the admin gets you know different privileges to see different pages. So this could be part of that. So firstly, let's just create, and this is in the profile view, we'll create another uh, quick little variable uh, and it'll be the bool is admin. So bool value uh, is admin and this is going to default to false. Now we're already going to save right here when we get the profile data, we're already gonna save the user uh, objects admin property to be either the true or false value that's coming back from firebase so all we need to do is in this future builder where we're setting the the country controller text we will do the same thing with this uh is admin variable and we're going to set that to the user um admin property and then we're going to use this null um this null operator which basically is saying if that value is null then make the value this other value over here. So if the value of this is null, we're gonna make it false. Um, and that will let us now use this to, to show something different here. So right now we're just returning padding here, but if we wrap this in a, another widget and we're gonna wrap it in a container, this container here can have a column within two, two options. So the first thing will be, you know, the country uh, right there like we have. So after this, let's create a, we'll create a new function that's going to display what the admin sees. So we'll just call this the admin feature. And this admin feature, we're gonna make a widget function itself. So down here, uh, this will return a widget. And this obviously will be more complex. Like I, you would make this a more complex widget, but for now, I'm just going to make a very simple one that returns text. So uh, we want to return if the if this is an admin. So if that if that is admin variable is true, then we're going to return we're going to return a uh, really just text a text field that says. Uh, you're an admin uh, and then because this is returning a widget we do need an else here we do need to return just an empty widget because we can't return null into the into the builder or else it's going to actually error out because it's going to be trying to put null in that widget tree so we can just do a container uh, that's empty all right so if you save this and view the profile you'll see that looks fine. One quick thing I do want to change is the order of this. I want to put the, um, I want to move this created date above, above the future builder, uh, mainly because I want that admin thing to be at the bottom here, which is where it is. But this is all kind of just layout stuff that you can change later. So you'll see this isn't an admin, so we, we don't see that text field. Now, if I do go into Firebase here uh, and I change this value here, Instead of null, it'll be the Boolean, and we're gonna have it true. And if we hit update here, uh, you will actually have to leave the page and come back to it, but now you'll see it does say you are an admin. So that admin feature is now there because, because this user is now an admin.
So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, as you can see, this is kind of just the basic setups of how you can uh, create custom fields for a user profile. But I think you, with these concepts, you can easily see how you can scale this to be any type of uh, user profile specific uh, elements. I uh, will reiterate one thing with the name here. If you do want the user to be able to edit their name, what I would recommend is not displaying this name at all and actually not even collecting this name when they sign up, but instead having the name be a field on this new user data and then save the name you know, as a field down here. Um, and there's ways you can actually have them start with this name and then keep those two names in sync, but that might get a little bit confusing. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, ciao for now.